So this is how I manage things in my business. Feel free to let me know if you know you guys have any thoughts with this. I didn't change anything on this, but I have a couple of additional, um, you know, uh, slides or information to share. Uh, basically, the way you want to look at this is again, if whether you have a lead manager or not, this is kind of your uh, as the lead comes in. This is how you want to start thinking what the process is going to look like. So you have a new incoming lead could be from whatever lead source you have. It could be doing PPC, paper lead, direct mail, cold calling, SMS, doesn't matter. You have a new lead coming in. It's a new incoming lead coming in um, for us. So the first thing we see is was the call answered or not? If the call was not answered, we automatically put that lead on a drip campaign. So there's a feature. Uh, this is not necessarily a recently training, but again, you know, it's built around kind of what I'm doing in my business using recently. Um, but so you want to make sure if the call is not answered, you immediately want to put that lead on a drip campaign. Now, depending on which lead source the lead is coming from, you want to have different, you know, drip campaign built in. So for example, if you have lead coming in for, uh, from your direct mail and you miss a call, then you want to have a drip campaign that's specific to that, uh, the, the message is specific to the lead source, uh, direct mail. So for example, if you have, and you can do it at each campaign level, which I'll go into a little bit later. Uh, so for example, if you have a lead that comes in from your direct mail probate list, right? And then you could set up a separate drip campaign. That's you miss a call. You don't answer it. Then you could say, Hey, I just missed a call from you. Um, you probably called us from the postcard that we sent out. Uh, can you give me the information of the property? Just start the conversation just to see. And then, you know, we have a message. We have a task set up for our team uh, to start calling them. So we send them a text message immediately. Then we wait like five minutes and give them a call. But if they respond to the text message before we call them, then we, you know, uh, we just communicate with them via text unless they request for us to call them. So if a call comes in or a lead comes in, you do not answer it. Put them on a drip campaign immediately. Uh, and then this is a drip campaign. This should be in everybody's account already. It's called RES drip miss call, no name, no address. Because when you initially have a lead coming in, you're not gonna have their name. You're not gonna have the address. So the drip just says, hey, sorry, we missed your call. Can you give me the uh, address of the property that you are calling about? So that's, if you miss a call, very simple. Uh, put them on a drip campaign, just start the conversation. And even if instead of you have, instead of incoming lead uh, through call, if you have a web lead coming in from your website, you know, still put them on a drip campaign. In that case, you will have their name, you will have the property address, then you can put them on a diff different drip campaign. And because uh, if the lead is coming in from website, for example, you know, for us on our recently website, we asked for the name, phone number, email address, and their uh, property address. And what we are doing with those properties are, or those leads are, we are texting them, we're emailing them, and then we wait a few minutes to see if they respond. If they respond to text or email, then we just communicate through that channel until you know they want us to call them. So make sure you, if you have a new lead coming in, if you miss a call or if it's a new web lead coming in, you immediately put them on a drip campaign without you having to do that, completely automate the process. So you just immediately engage them in that conversation because when they're filling out the form on the website or they're calling you at that point, that's when they have the highest motivation. So you want to make sure you immediately start engaging them in a conversation. Then let's say if it's an incoming lead in a call comes in, you answer the call, um, then you want to review the call detail at that point. You know, you want to see, you want to start the conversation. Are they interested in selling? You know, let's say you send out direct mail. And at that point, the lead comes in, uh, the person calls and say, hey, I received your postcard. I'm not interested in selling. Can you please take me off um, you know, your marketing campaign? Then you just move them to dead lead and then move the reason not interested in selling. And you make sure you still ask them for their property address. So you're not mailing them again. Uh, just tell them, hey, we do bulk mailing, mass mailing. If you can give us your property address, we'll make sure we exclude them, exclude you from any future mailing. The next thing, if they're interested in selling, next thing you want to ask them is the address of uh, the property that they are calling about, right? And then once you get the address of the property, the next thing the lead manager is doing in our business is 
running the comps on the property. Again, we have the Zillow link built in and you can just Google the address. You know, uh, we have the Zillow integration in our system, but you can Google the property address and then you can, um, you know, based on Realtor, Redfin or whatnot, just get a sense of what the property is worth. And then next thing you want to try to ask the seller is see if they can provide you the mortgage information. So uh, like right now we're in the, we made an offer on a property yesterday for 150,000. But the seller has a mortgage of 165, but he said he has mortgage on two properties. So we're still trying to figure it out. But that's if you can get that information, it's really good to have it. Uh, so you're not wasting your time if the seller says, hey, I'm okay selling for 100,000, but I have this loan of 150,000 that I need to pay off and the property is only worth 150,000. And then, you know, depending on kind of what your business model is, you might want to refer it to an agent or, you know, work on short deals if, uh, or short sale if your uh, market uh, is doing that. And then, so what we do is, then we look into for us, is the mortgage less than 80% of the ARV? So let's say lead comes in, the seller, you know, the property is worth 200,000. The seller says, I have a mortgage of 150,000. At that point, we look at, okay, what is the value of the mortgage? It's less than 80% of the ARV. So ARV is 200,000, the mortgage, 80% is 160, it's less than that. Then, you know, we call the lead back uh, at that point. Uh, just basically continue the conversation if the seller had just left a, you know, voicemail. If not, then we refer that to an agent or listing. So this is where you might have a different uh, criteria in your business. But again, I'm just sharing with you, like as a general practice, what we are doing and what I notice a lot of other investors are doing. If it's, you know, if the mortgage value is more than what they're willing to pay for the house then they refer it to an agent and then at that point what you want to do is because these deals these leads are very very easy uh to get slipped through the cracks you want to put these leads on a drip campaign you know you can call it agent uh, agent refer drip this is just for your internal purposes to follow up with the agent once a month or once every other month to make sure you know if you refer the listing over to an agent uh, and if you have some sort of a revenue share agreement with the agent that you're actually getting paid on that and you don't forget about these listings. So you could have you could have a simple drip campaign set up to follow up with the agent, you know, once a month, once every other month about that specific listing. So this is all internally. Someone on your team is following up with that. That's the you have the information. And then at that point, you know, you're calling the lead back. Uh, if the seller had left a message or, you know, you have this information available uh, through whatever incoming lead. Um, then at that point, you know, when you call the lead back, did the did lead answer the phone? If they did not answer the phone, then you want to put them on a separate drip campaign, which is called, uh, you know, we have this, I believe in every account called RDS trip, we have their name and address trip. So at this point, because you've had this entire conversation with them, what you're doing is you're putting them on a different drip campaign and it's going to be not as aggressive. Again, you can set it up based on what your business needs are and different uh, lead source, depending on where the lead is coming from. Uh, but you can set it up based on based on this and um, based on the situation, you know, all the information that you have. But if they answer the phone at that point, then you want to start qualifying the lead based on some additional information.